All right, people. Welcome back. More DM Dog commentary. So we are joined by Alexis once again. Hey, everyone. So Alexis is on this weekend, last week, because we're going to try to fill in all the missing times that Alexis hasn't been here. And uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy her presence here. So uh, as you guys know, new ban list, which means that everybody pretty much got a reset button <laughs> when it comes to their, what, rating? Yeah, or as I like to call it, a fiber jar. <laughs> yep. So we have uh, JG Nightmare here, which is apparently a Yugi tuber. No, the uh, 360 G GT is a Yugi tuber. Oh, okay. 360 GT at uh, 125, 98 for Nightmare. Uh, we're seeing some Monarch plays, which of course, I mean, why not? I mean, it didn't get hit at all, including Pantheism. <laughs> I hate you. Some people are trying to say Upstart was a hit to Monarchs. No, fuck you. I think you. we can all agree that that was not a hit to Monarchs. No. They did not need Upstart. Why? You got just... fucking one of the most broken fucking draw cards in all in the game right now, fucking Pantheism. Also, uh, are we ignoring that he has a 15 card extra deck? I know, like, he has a 15 card extra deck in Monarchs, like, where are you going with this? <laughs> like, are you actually planning on locking some people out or something like that? I think he's playing the Super Quantum build. That's the only one I know of that plays an extra deck. And so what, just turbo into your Super Quantums and try to bust out that yep. Megazord as quick as possible? Is that it? I don't think I've heard of yeah, this. They... Yeah, you use uh, Megazaborg to send necessary monsters from your extra deck to the graveyard. And then you use the field spell to special summon it, I believe. I could be wrong on that. Hmm. I see, because I'm kind of curious. I mean, I'm kind of wondering. You you got playing Monarchs. You clearly have an, an extra deck, so where are we going with this? <laughs> I mean, you just Unless keep on... Say... No, it definitely looks like a Megazord deck. I mean, come on. Triple yeah. Pantheism. Yeah. Yeah. This is totally fair. Upstart gets hit. Chicken Game gets banned. But Pantheism, that, that's perfectly fine at three because it's limited to one deck. I would, like I said, I would have just been fine with some of the hits that OCG did. Like, there's no way that they didn't cross their mind where they're just like, should we hit Monarchs? Nah. Should we hit Strike? Nah. There's no way you can't discuss that in a board meeting. I'm assuming that it's like a more of a board meeting, that it's not just some random person by themselves who throws the list together, that they actually sit down and discuss things. I'm trying to hope for the best of Konami that they should con conduct themselves like a business, but I don't know about that. <laughs> Sad part is this is conducting themselves like a business. They want to sell cards, so they're going to leave some of the more powerful things on hit to sell more product. <laughs> For all I know, they just freaking just throw darts at a dartboard with uh, particular cards and hits uh, pinned up. <laughs> like, we were going to hit Pantheism, but uh, you see, uh, uh, <laughs> we didn't hit that on the dartboard, so... <laughs> That point is that I can actually see that being the reason. On the bright side, we got Thousand Eyes Restrict back at one. Just that cookie cutter shit. I can't stand it. It's like, all right, well, we're gonna hit upstart. We're tired of the the the, the turbo wing cookie cutter shit. Oh wait, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, put Norton to one and Thousand Eyes Restrict to one, which means that of course everybody is gonna want to play triple Instafusion with those two. Well. Not necessarily. I know some people who are not going to be playing Thousand Nights Restrict because it's not good against Cosmo. That's true. He did He did well, say summon. He didn't say effect. And there is that triple solemn strike. I knew it was going to go back up. So, uh, $70? Uh, I think it's probably going to be somewhere between 70 and 90 I don't. I don't know exactly what it's going to be. Although right now it's at 70 70 plus. So, uh, yeah... yeah. I mean, it didn't get hit, so shoot right back up in price, and you don't have to worry about it getting hit for a long time, unless Konami, like I said, still no end date on that damn ban list. I'm just, I'm just so fucking sick and tired of Konami and their bullshit. <laughs> like, like, the community yeah. is Konami's... so many people quitting Yu-Gi-Oh. It's, it's well, I was piece. about to quit because of having to deal with Dev Pro. Thankfully, DN fixed some stuff, so I don't have to deal with Dev Pro anymore. I say, can you Game. even? I, I thought you couldn't do that. Yeah, you can't chain. You can't chain what? You can't chain strike because it's chain link one, a reverse, chain link two, return, which means that he cannot strike. That is correct. Yep. Solemn Same. strike must be chained directly to whatever it's trying to negate. Yep. Which is kind of why Solemn strike is a little bit more fair than some other card, but at the same time. 
The only decks that can honestly work around it are uh, Mermails and Monarchs. Like Cosmo, they can't really work around a Psalm Strike. They kind of just have to bait it out and take the hit. And Pepe is just like, strike. or whatever, whatever Pepe is going to turn into. I, I assume it's going to turn into something. Um, what's what I'm thinking of? I can't. I don't know what it's officially called, but some people are already uh, adapting Pepe into like a normalish type engine where they're using painful decision to get the scales to their hand and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, if Pepe is, uh, well, Draco Pals isn't dead, I, I definitely see them adapting, like... Yeah, they're gonna adapt so long as they have some capability. Also, you mind if I quickly leave the duel for a sec? I wanna just see what this guy's YouTube channel is like. Sure, go ahead. Okay, be back in one second, everyone. So, uh, I guess I have to keep you guys entertained by myself now? <laughs> I mean, there's not much going on here. It's just, it's just interesting to see monarchs with an actual extra deck. The gem knight plays with brilliant fusions. Just really interesting to see. You don't see that that often, if ever. But uh, you see it a lot in the OCG. You don't really see it a lot in the TCG. Uh, have monarchs really done much since their their hit for April with uh, one pantheism, one domain? Uh, they haven't done anything yet. And also, this guy's a pretty big channel. About half your size. Okay. Do you draw for plasma? I'll link you the. I'll link you the channel afterwards. For the time being, I'm back to the duel. Oops. Okay. Sorry, forgot to close his channel. So what I miss? Uh, nightmare scooped. Apparently he had bad hand. He de-drawed plasma and then scooped. So. Wait, plasma? What is he playing? I don't know. <laughs> That's the only thing that he really revealed. Strike, D draw, and plasma. That's it. And then scooped it up. <laughs> Maybe playing some kind of uh, Destiny Dragoons uh, deck? I don't know. Maybe he just wants to drop plasma on you and just have a uh, walking skill drain. Yeah, I can't. I know that Quiport would immediately find a reason to come back into the meta, but I actually want skill drain back at two. I mean, it's not like Cleese are ever going to do anything. Um, just give up on Cleese. They're done. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, in OCG they're still doing stuff, but here in TCG, like, nah. <laughs> you ban that wavering eyes too. Like, that's all you needed to do. All you need to do is ban wavering eyes, and it would have been no tower turbo. But instead, you went the other route and just destroyed Cleese, and then hit. That, uh, yeah. that Wavering Eye, so whatever. Ironic, I actually got up to about 1200 rating with Quipport's uh, last format. Yeah, it looks like he's playing some kind of Destiny Hero Dragoons Turbo with a few Masked Heroes. Okay, I mean, Denklaw on deck is never terrible. I mean, Denklaw just, what, yeah. doesn't like Denklaw like pretty much auto win against Monarchs? Uh, yeah, it is, because they can't really search out anything. And if they try to turbo through their deck, they're going to lose everything. Okay, well, sending a Monarch Speller Trap is, is a cost, so that, that Prime is going to go to the graveyard anyway, though. Yep. I don't think it's going to matter. You're not going to have anything else to, you know, use. And also, I don't think I would have chained Max C to uh, Mass Change, because now you're just going to lose some... Oh, wait, he's going to lose something out of his hand anyway. Yeah, he's going to be losing. So once per turn, so draw off of Max C, then then Denklaw summon, then you draw off your Pantheism. No, Mist Effect is after the chain. Yeah. Yep. And then would Dark Law still go off and go off well, in the same chain or no? It's technically he's supposed to chain them together, I think. Let me read this card. Remember card your opponent has a card on their hand. Yeah. It's supposed to be chained together. I mean, if you really want to, you can call them out on that, but most people just do it this way anyway. Mm-hmm. Another chain by MC by a miss by the yep. So and uh there goes a Rebus. Well he needs to have that monarch storm front or he just lost the duel, I think. Hmm. Oh Depro and... just finished reinstalling. That's good. Kind of... I just gotta figure out how to reactivate this thing. Kind of pondering what uh, 
the 60 GT is. If, uh, I guess I can go ahead and put his link in the description if you guys want to see it. Go to his channel. <laughs> I say put it in the description just as a courtesy because, I mean, he is a Yugi tuber and we are kind of recording him. Yeah, that's true. Special summon Solar Windjammer. Okay. <laughs> is he going to like, see summon into Cyber Dragon Infinity? I hope he doesn't because <laughs> that would make me sad. <laughs> And Sumi just uses the special summon to tribute off. Yeah, that can also be a thing. He might have Monarch Stormfront in his hand and go ahead and tribute off the... Yeah, there he is. He's going to tribute off both of them. Yep, so tribute off both of them for a level 8, I'm assuming. Probably. I mean, did I ever do anything else? No, he's going to tribute it for a Solar Windjammer. That's and... Salt. Oh, wow. And now going to Infinity? What the fuck? Wait, he, he can't. He can't. Monarch Stormfront. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you, like, you can't special summon from the extra deck this turn. Uh, yeah, he can't do that. I, I think he might have missed... He, I think he might have misplayed. You can't summon I just from... PM Nightmare. Let's see if he actually responds. Stormforth. He got it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, uh, can you imagine if you could do that? I mean, some stupid decks would be instantly viable. I mean, you gotta have some exchange for playing it uh, over what? Uh, soul soul Exchange? Yeah, Soul Exchange. One you can't attack, the other one you can't summon from the extra, but come on. Yeah, he also can't have two solar recharges. I didn't. I forgot about that. Oh yeah, and he, there can only be one solar wind gem on the field. Period. Like I, I completely forgot about that. That is a very obscure thing. One, the card yeah. not play that often. Two, it's like okay. Yeah, I don't really see a reason to play when you have that one butterfly that can become a level five or a level six. Okay, so I guess we gotta run run that back. So dark wall back on the field. You still played your monarch storm force. You got anything to tribute, or are you just gonna let it fizzle? Well, it looks like he's probably going to fizzle it. I think because I, mean, I would have immediately summoned out the Monarch if I had one in my hand. I wouldn't even have thought about the Solar Wind Jammer. I mean, it looked like he was trying to be really cute, but out in Infinity. So, nah, he's just messed up. He's going to scoop it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, think, I think that was his only out. Okay. I said you could have just not special summoned this first Solar Wind Jammer, but I guess you were like, hey, I can do all of this. Like, eh, read your cards. Yeah, that... <laughs> The misplay cost him the game. Yeah, so... At least it's not like the people I seem to get where when they misplay, they expect me to let them take it back. I mean, if it's a casual match, sure, but if it's on ranked, I'm not going to let you take back, like, five plays because you misplayed. Mm-hmm. And that was a serious one. You could have got out of that situation if you just sort of just Monarch Stone Force and then tributed off the first Solar Wind Jammer. Instead, mm -hmm. you're like, let me special and have multiple and then just fuck up everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's Yu-Gi-Oh for you. So, they are done siding. Gonna go ahead and go into game three and uh, hopefully I won't mess up. So, I definitely say, like I said, there's no debate on the top five decks. Like, I, the top five decks of the current format are pretty easy to determine. But anything after that? five is gonna be... Monarchs, whatever Pepe evolves into, Cosmo, Mermails, and I really don't know what I would put fifth. I guess maybe Yang Zings or Heroes. No, PK Fire. You completely forgot about that deck, didn't you? To be honest, I have no idea what PK Fire is supposed to stand for. Phantom Knight, Burning Abyss. Oh. Oh, right. Burning Abyss got Beatrice, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, Burning Abyss got Beatrice. Which, I, I'm, from what I'm hearing, they're considering those separate decks. Like... The Phantom Knight Burning Abyss deck is separate from just pure Burning Abyss. Because well, they do both cards. operate on different spectrums, so I can definitely agree with that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, those those are some great decks. Burning Abyss is top. Heroes, of course, is still there. So, you know. Will Heroes ever not be there so long as they have uh, Dark Law? No. <laughs> as long as Dark Law is there to fuck up your day, they will always be there, especially with the high consistency they have. Like, they were the yeah. last ones I want to hear whining about fucking Rota going down to one. <laughs> they have no reason to, to whine about Rota when they have their own uh, archetypal specific Rota. Mm hmm. At three and the hero lives too. Like, I don't want to hear your shit at all. But then, of course, we still hear this shit when it comes to fucking uh, Stratos, so. 
I'm sort of happy Stratos is at one, even though I'm not going to lie, I do want Stratos back at one, just because my first competitive deck ever was a deck that ran Stratos back in the DS game. I'm glad he's gone. I never liked him in the first place. <laughs> well, keep in mind, I was also a stupid casual back then. Ever since I got completely sacked by that fucking guy at my locals, I never liked that deck. I felt so salty when he sacked the shit out of me with fucking heroes. Well, that's what kind of what heroes do. They sack you immensely. I got shit you not. Like, I was playing my Uval deck. I fucking, uh... Summon Armageddon Knight, send some, and I had some backer, right? This man goes, Heavy Storm. Dark Hole. Summon Stratos. Search for Bubble Man. Set all his hand. Throw summon Bubble Man. Go into, uh... Uh... Blade oh, Armor Ninja. De Detach Stratos. De Monster Reborn Stratos. <laughs> get for Search for Bubble Man. Special Summon. XE and Excalibur. Detach. Attack me for game. I was like, wow. So you opened up pretty broken, right? He's like, eh, I opened up okay. <laughs> like, yeah. like, okay. Okay. Fuck you. <laughs> That's what Bubble Beat will do to you. <laughs> exactly, like, fuck Bubble Beat. Like, uh. <laughs> uh That reminds me of another nightmare I had with my friend, who I'm sure will be all too happy to remind me if I talk about on this video. We were playing a duel way back when we were both kids. I was playing my hero deck, whatever it was. I mean, whatever kind of hero deck it was, I don't really remember. I just, I have the deck on my, on my DN. It's just really, really bad. So I managed to punch him down to uh, 200 life points left. I figured I had the duel. I had a... Uh, what did I have face down? I had a... Oh, yeah, I had a Wabaku face down. So I go ahead, summon my mon my uh, Elemental Hero Lady Heat. Um, I go to use her effect in the end phase. Also, he has FGD on the field, by the way. Forgot to mention that. So uh, I go to burn him for the last 200 with Lady Heat, and guess what just so happens to be face down? What? Make one guess. I don't know, what? Solemn Judgment. <laughs> I mean, you can always play Solemn Judgment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I end up losing my Lady Heat, I survived a turn with Wabaku, I drew into a spell card, and he proceeds to blast me with his FGD. Yep. <laughs> Needless to say, I was very upset at that point because I had that victory and then Solemn yeah, Judgment. But Solemn, said, Solemn's win more. Whether you're winning or losing, you can always play Solemn. That's what makes it fair, right? Because everybody could play Solemn. <laughs> it's fair maybe in the beginning of the game. It's not so fair when you've got like, no life points and you can negate whatever you feel like. I said that salt fuels hatred. I have another salty story. I was doing against uh, six Spamurai. Uh, he goes first, opens up gateway, sacks the shit at me. Game two, I go first, and I crush him, right? Game yeah. three, he opens up the gateway and sacks the shit at me. <laughs> it's like, all right, all right. <laughs> and he's like, GG, like, oh my god. Like, I was like, I can't. It's like, god, I wish gateway was banned, the next list gateway banned. I'm like, mmm, justification. <laughs> yeah. You want to know what's kind of sad, though? Gateway's at 2 in the OCG, and 6 Samurais are doing nothing. Uh, that's surprising, but I guess they're they're more liberal than we are. Yeah, we'll probably get ga Gateway back to 1 in, like, 2018 or something. That's why I was shocked that they didn't hit Strike. Like, I can see OCG not hitting Strike. I, I can see that. But TCG? Like, that's crazy that you didn't hit Strike. Didn't Solemn Warning get hit down to 1 basically immediately? No, I went to 2. Oh, I thought it got hit to one. Mm -mm, they went to two. Remember, it was in two in uh, Dino Rabbit era. And then it got hit to oh, one. Right, right. <laughs> Not bad. Also, my babbling, I haven't been paying attention to the duel. What happened? Uh, He did the Plague Mally combo and busted out of Bills. Sounds about right. Also, didn't we see someone play this deck last time? Which something one? Like it? The, the uh, Dark Destiny Malicious... I don't Stop think that. so. I, don't, I would remember that. So wait, you just summon malicious just to summon malicious? I think you did it for defense for some unknown reason. I have to say, like, I was thinking maybe like mass chain second or something, but all right, so I'm back mm -hmm. prime. It's just well, like, if it was why? a mass chain second, couldn't you just play regular mass change at that point? Uh, doesn't regular mass change have to be on a elemental hero? 
I think it's just a hero monster, but I could be wrong there. Yeah, I can't remember. I I, I, I can't remember either. I'm like, it's one of the two. I think I want to say Elemental Hero, but it might just be Hero. Hold that thought. I will quickly check what it requires. Just look, this is a perfect example. Why didn't Pantheism get hit? Why? Really... <laughs> Why? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I think it didn't get hit because someone of the Konami is being super greedy. Man, fuck that. Like, I, 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 of course, everybody has some kind of hatred towards the top deck. They're the best, so you have some kind of hatred. But what I really can't stand and what pisses me off the most is when fucking one of the top decks is a goddamn structure deck. Nope, it's just a hero. <laughs> he played it right now as you were looking for it. Yep, I found it. It's a hero. Yep, and he just played it while you were looking for it. Nice change. Um, uh, malicious. Not bad. Yeah. Also, I just noticed, didn't we have several structure decks that became meta? That's what I I'm mean... saying. I can't stand that shit. Like, if, you, if you're playing a top-tier deck that you have to pay hard-earned money, two, three hundred dollars, and go down and pull fucking shit from uh, packs and shit, and more power to you. But if all you gotta do is go down to fucking Walmart and buy fucking three structure decks... And slap them together? <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck yeah, that's, you. That's pretty insane when you basically can just go to your local Walmart and buy a, uh, a top-level deck for next to nothing. Yeah, just $30. Oh, I got the best deck. Like, I'm going to a uh, regionals this upcoming weekend, and I, I don't even want, I don't even want to enter because I just know I'm just going to be seeing a butt-ton of Monarchs. Especially since it's a regionals that's not, you know, that big. Out, it's in Utah, so I'm assuming that not a lot of people are going to have too much top tier shit. There's probably just going to be a lot of money. It's like, why spend fucking the money to play like Phantom Knights and spend like 60 bucks on one break sword when you could just fucking buy three Monarch structure decks with three broken ass pantheisms and go to town? Fucking retarded. Yep. Fucking I'm, retarded. I am a little bit confused though. Why do they give it the name PK Fire? Phantom Knight, PK. And then fires and burning abyss, but also PK fire from a uh, you know nests from Earthbound. At the risk of sounding like a child with no life, what's what's Earthbound? Oh, uh, okay. Earthbound is a Nintendo game. Uh, you've ever played Super Smash Bros? Yes, I have. Okay. I, I basically. I oh wait, isn't that uh, that kid with the bat? With Ness the... and Luke. Ness, yeah. Ness and Lucas, right? Yes, and they have a move called PK fire. So PK as in Phantom Knight, and then fire, burning abyss. Oh, I remember that attack. So many nightmares. Yep, so it's just a cutesy way of coming up with a new name, like Hat or a PP. So yeah. it's just a new cute name. PK, Phantom Knight, Fire, Burn That's this. Not so cute when your worst uh, matchup is Ness. Like, <laughs> I, play on a, I played on a DS game for like uh, three months before my game decided to break, and Ness was basically the only character I couldn't beat for my life. <laughs> So uh, now your nightmares will come back, of course. Yeah, the moment I start seeing that deck, my nightmares will be all too happy to remind me that uh, Ness is now in Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> okay, let's go here. From the deck to your hand, except by drawing, you can banish Hey, one sec, I gotta do something real quick. Okay. This on the table in there, huh? in the TV room. What? Get this out of here. Okay. And you got clothes on the table in the TV room. Bitch, I'm a whore and a bitch. Out of the way, Dan. Fuck you, bitch. Yeah, sorry about my brother. He has the mouth of a sailor times two. Wait, can you even activate pantheism with Dark Law on the field? Um, one sec. What is pantheism? Send. Uh, no, because it has to go to the graveyard. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't fucking do pantheism with Dark Law on the field. Oh, he broke through skilled it. He broke through skilled it. Ah, uh, okay. If you break through skilled it, then yeah, you can do that. Yeah. I was like, I was like, wait a minute, but I saw, I remember, I was like, didn't he have, like, breakthrough skill or something like that? Yeah, he breakthrough skilled it. So he can do whatever he wants without Dark Law doing anything. For now, and assuming that he doesn't, you know, not manage to get rid of it on his turn, because if he doesn't, then Dark Law's gonna go back to ruining his life on Nightmare's turn. Mm-hmm, so you better do something, 360 GT. <laughs> also, are we just doing this one duel the entire episode? Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, we're already at 24 minutes, so... Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think is going to be, like, the go-to rogue deck of the format? Go-to rogue deck? What, outside the top five? Yeah, like, I'm personally thinking that 
uh, Kaiju might see a little bit of a resurgence. Mainly because they have a good Cosmo yeah. matchup and an okay. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I know, I know. Him, I know, I know. And they stay here. Do you want to go handle that real quick? Yeah, I'll, I'll get it. Oh yeah, uh, Cosmo have a have a hard time with the Kaiju because they can't really rely on their ship staying on the field. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Burning Abyss can't really handle having a Kaiju on the field either because once they have a Kaiju, their entire Burning Abyss lineup becomes dead. Mm -hmm. And if it's Be and if it's Beatrice Turbo, well, have fun with that. <laughs> What else was there? Uh, Pepe, or whatever it evolves into, while it can definitely handle the kaijus, interrupt the kaiju slumber is very much a card. I mean, it's just a dark hole. The other shit's gonna go back to the extra track anyway, so. That's true, but if you can get everything off the field, you can summon out the, uh, what's it called? Summon out the Star Destroying Kaiju, and then most of their deck kind of struggles, because Magnister still has to target one of their pendulums, allowing Star Destroying Kaiju to trigger. Yeah, because it's just something targets something on the field, right? That's correct. They so. can't really castell it. They can't run over it with anything in their... Whoa. In their extra, in their extra deck. The lightning. Well, yeah, that's like the only one that they can use. Yeah, but that depends on where it's at. <laughs> depends on let's, where it's... And let's not forget that uh, Pendulum Sorcerer... No, wait, it has to target exactly one card. Never mind on that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so Luster's dead... Ignister is dead. Castell and most of the extra deck can't get over that Star Destroyer. Yeah, they have a they have a respectable matchup. I wouldn't say it's anything to write home about, but it's a respectable matchup. As long as you can stop number thirty nine the lightning, you should be good in Fury. Just uh, I already know what I'm gonna name this episode. Especially if GT wins. <laughs> I'm gonna call it um Wait, what are we going to call it? I'm going to call it, why the fuck, well, not probably not the fuck, but why isn't Pantheism hit? Because <laughs> he's breaking the shit out of this. He, he, he plays multiple Pantheism per turn, drawing multiple cards, and then do the, and then banishes, and then has another card to banish for the next turn for more multiple searches. <laughs> it's just so plus. It's just so fucking good. Yeah, I don't think, uh, I don't think this was the brightest move on Konami's part. I just... He said, "You can, you could you can discuss domain to the cows come home, but I was, I would have at least been happy with just pantheism hit." I think pantheism's the only card you really need to hit. It's like it's so fucking ridiculous. Like, what were they thinking? I think they were thinking, "How can we make a tribute deck good?" <laughs> I mean, if you wanted to make Marks good again, that's all you needed, because. Still, they, you know, they're as inconsistent like fucking crazy, but if they get a pantheism and can play it, that's pretty much a new hand. Yeah, basically. So or Even if it's not a new hand, it's... Uh, you basically get to get whatever combo pieces you need. Like, oh, you have that troubling uh, insert random monster here? Let's do Monarch Stormfront. Mm-hmm. Grab your domain, grab your return, grab whatever. It's so fucking good. <laughs> you pretty much... Drawing into two cards deep is nice. I mean, for goodness sakes, we had a lure at one for, like, forever. Trading is good. Sacred Sword's been hit. So, obviously, getting deeper into your deck is great. Then yeah. you also get to banish and get a search, too. Like, ridiculous. Yeah, the <coughs> Monarch support is actually so good that I've made a, B a BES deck, an Ancient Gear deck, and a... What's that last deck I made? Did that come to me? An Earthbound Immortal deck off just the support alone with no actual Monarchs being necessary. And the sad part is that it wins. I mean, you don't need the Monarchs. Just play the Monarch support. I mean, it's freaking engine. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need the monsters. You just need the uh, Pantheism. You know, they should, uh, you should name this Pantheism.deck. Pretty much. Nope. Like I said, I'm with fucking... With Idea and Eidos doing their thing, too? Didn't, didn't uh, Edia get hit the 1 in the OCG? Mm, no. Did it? I don't think so. Hmm. I do not think so. Well, let me check. Just go ahead. I'm and... on it. I don't think so. I think I think it was just, uh, just Domain and Pantheism to 1. I want to say. 
Found it. Oh, that was quick. Well, it's like the first link on this bit on um, on the searches. <laughs> um. Okay, you're right. It didn't get hit the one. Yeah, it didn't. I think that was like on a fake list or something. One of the many fake lists I've done. I think I do. It was I think it was one of the fake lists, like that that supposed leak list. I think IDEO was that one, I want to say. The one that everybody was believing for a cool minute. I never believe anything unless it's actually on the official site. True. <laughs> yeah, the supposed leak list for March, I believe that one hit IDEO. Let me, let me see. That one did. That one I know for a fact did. So, there we go. I mean, it would have been nice, but... I, I think that would have been hurt a little bit too much. Like, Pantheism and Idea hit? Like, oh my god, Monarchs would be fucking crying. Yeah. Idea is, like, the only reason my, uh... My weird decks that just throw the Monarch support and even work. Cause idea is essentially a one-card tribute summon. Yep, yep. Just summon Idea to summon Eidos, and Eidos would go ahead and get you that additional tribute summon, and there you go, then... Idos will summon back Idea, and Idea will grab you that with that banished card. Like, it's just so good. Like, they just go off on each other like crazy. Yeah, that's why a lot of people only running, uh, like, I think it's three Idea and two Idios. I don't know why. If I was playing Monarch, I'd still go with, I'd still go with, uh... Three and three? Ring, three and three. Because Idos, he's good in himself as well. Also, this is a really long game. Really long gamble. I mean, okay. Oh, Panzer. Okay. Cyber Dragon. I, I seriously thought. I see. You know, I seriously thought we were about Wait. to see something that that we might have not seen. They'd be able to take out, take take care of that bill. I seriously thought he was gonna go insta fusion for thousand hours trick and take the bills. <laughs> I would have laughed if that happened. Durandal? Really? Durandal? At this time? At this current moment? I I, I don't agree you, with that play. I guess you really need a new hand. Like, is that it? I hope so, otherwise I really don't agree with that play. Hmm, what other rank 5s are that I could have dealt with a Beals? Uh, well, his prime is light, right? And yeah, Panzer but... is light, so you have two level 5 lights. So I think of a perfectly good rank 5 monster that can handle Beals. <laughs> play to these! <laughs> But whatever, whatever, GT. Hopefully you can pull something off. This build's going a lot longer than I thought it was. <laughs> Apparently whenever I join you, you would get longer than normal videos. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> well, look at the bright side. You're not predicting the future and messing with our minds. <laughs> it's like every time, like even on your stream before I had to leave, every time you said something, it came true. Was it the end phase? I, I, okay, if you say so. It was his, it was Nightmare's end phase, unless I wasn't paying attention. I, I can, I can definitely say I'm not 100% paying attention to this duel, just because I don't know what GT is going with this. This deck is weird. This duel would have been much simpler if you just were playing a pure Monarch deck instead of whatever the hell you're Wait, doing is he, now. is he tributing? Yes, he is. Mm-hmm. I don't know what life is anymore, you bell. What do you mean you don't know what life is? He just uh, he just exceeds summoned. Yep. And then he tributed off for a heavenly. Yep. <laughs> I mean, why? I don't know. I just he's still trying to figure out how to handle his bills when he could have handled it a long time ago. All right, there's a reverse. Sure. I think, wait, what if that trap card is that card that lets you tribute someone on your opponent's turn and he plans to wait until uh, Nightmare's turn and then tribute summon Underworld Monarch to get rid of the Beals? It might be. Uh, was that Escalation? Yeah, you, I think so. You don't see a lot of Monarch players playing that card anymore. Diamond Dude. Okay. I well, know it's kind of sad. What? I actually didn't understand Diamond Dude's effect until like five years ago. <laughs> like when I was playing in the DS games, I honestly had no idea how he worked. When I was playing in real life, I didn't know how he worked. Ah. Like I, 
I think I wasted like seven admins times on this guy before I finally got what he did. <laughs> Powerful number generator. Let's go. Isn't reasoning at one now? Yep. Oh, well, he top decked it. Yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so <deep>. Wow. <laughs> All right. That's probably the exact fight you would uh, like to see with uh, Infernoids before, you know, a whole reason. Just reasoning for Demok, and then Demok grabs back your reasoning during the end phase. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think uh, AL just lost because. I mean, Dima, what are you going to do against that? Even with the Arata, it's still a pretty good card. Yeah, I mean, Bills will go ahead and attack your, and kill your Ether. It comes out of your back row. You can go ahead and summon your Prime, but Dima will attack and banish that Prime, and then Armageddon Knight will attack for game. Oh, end of main phase one, thinking. Was I, mean, I right about that back row? Is that the it... Was it Escalation? Let's hope so. If not, I think AL just lost the duel. Trying to be cute. All you had to do was make a freaking Pleiades. <laughs> Is he even running Pleiades? I'm gonna ask him that after the duel. Oh, he's just gonna Prime. Prime, okay, I guess. Okay, so summon Prime and then... Still at the end of main phase one, activate, uh, activate Escalation and summon, I'm assuming? Could be. One was kind of funny. Oh, another Ether. Okay, so and the end of main phase isn't technically a thing. It's just how people say it. They want to do something before you go to the end phase. Ooh. Oh, there's Goodbye. A... Goodbye, Beals. Yep, there's that Monarch Stormforth. So, Prime is on the field. Go ahead and tribute. I'm assuming the Prime and one of your monsters to summon Ether. Ether, go ahead and summon. I don't know. I guess at this point, since he's already conducted his normal summon and everything, go ahead and summon Karaz, pop two, draw two. Let him draw two and go for game next turn. Uh, could be. I'm assuming cross. Why on earth is Depth Pro giving me twelve updates? I uninstalled this thing yesterday. Thinking on effect. Okay. Yes, effect. Summon cross. Pop those two. Let him draw two. Which I, that's kind of risky. It really is. He at least can't freaking. Well, too much if, I mean, if he pops too. both of those cards, then he, then he wins unless his opponent has a card to stop him. Also, he can. It's from hand or deck. It's just normally you never use the deck for. I mean, your hand for the effect. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I would forget this thing didn't have that effect if I didn't read this thing nonstop. No, oh, so nope. Remember. It's just gonna be, it's gonna be Erebus. Okay. Main phase two, anything? <laughs> I mean, you get that spell card during the end phase. <laughs> I wonder if he realizes that that he still had main phase one. He didn't need to go right to main phase two. He really didn't. He was still in main phase one because you kind of clip back into main phase one if your opponent does anything before you end. Okay, get destiny draw. I think that might be game. Early all game. I mean, all he has to do is suicide his. Actually, doesn't even need to suicide. Mm -hmm. Just needs to attack the Arm Armageddon Knight, and he wins. Yeah, that's all you need to do. Is just attack Armageddon Knight for game. Don't, don't, don't get cute. Don't get cute. Three six. Wrap this duel up. <laughs> Watch. He's gonna try to make like a triple XZ play in Monarch just to show that he can. No, no. I'm just gonna attack for game. Yep. Yep. Oh, looks like that's how the cookie crumbles. I'm going to quickly link you his YouTube channel. All right, so the link will be in the description to 360GT's channel. Uh, probably his uh, his extra deck, Monarch deck, is probably somewhere up on his channel. So uh, I looked at his. Check. Okay, so there you go, people. Wait one uh, sec. Let me double check. I honestly only looked at, like, three built three things. Uh, Pantheism should be hit to one. I am mad that it isn't, and uh, we'll be continuing to get set to buy that card in all of Monarchs for uh, the rest of the format for however long it is, because there's still no end date on the ban list. Uh, pendulums suck, and uh, Yu-Gi-Oh's a piece of shit. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> also, it doesn't have the one with the extra deck. It only has the one without an extra deck. Okay, well, so I guess go ahead and support 360GT if you want to. Uh, not going to say do it, but if you want to your choice <laughs> but uh do go ahead and go to alexis's channel 
Uh, her link is in the description. You gonna get back to doing some Yu-Gi-Oh content? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> insert insert funny quote here. I I don't have anything. Okay. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. And see you guys on Thursday with some more DM commentary. Thanks for watching.